1-800-650-1650. Dial each numeral. Eight. <laughs> Take 13-year-old Paul Glatzer playing Zach. Take a look at this. From the first beeps. The 1970s reigned supreme, a decade of groovy vibes and thrilling adventures. But amidst the flashy fashion and iconic music lies a treasure trove of experiences that define the childhoods of many. Join us to uncover 20 things in the 1970s that kids today no longer do. Number one, playing with rotary phones. In the groovy days of the 70s, nothing quite matched the thrill of playing with rotary phones. With each satisfying click and whirl of the dial, we embarked on adventures that sparked our imaginations. Dialing a friend's number was an art, fingers dancing over the circular pad with practice precision. But it wasn't just about making calls, but about mischief and connection. Whether chatting with imaginary friends or pulling harmless pranks, the rotary phone was our ticket to endless fun. Today, it's a cherished relic of simpler times. A reminder of the joy of childhood in an era before instant communication took over. Let's talk about school assignments now. Number two, using a typewriter for school assignments. The days when the clickety-clack of a typewriter filled the room with a comforting rhythm. In those days, nothing was like the satisfaction of typing school assignments on those trusty machines. Each keystroke was deliberate fingers dancing across the keys with the precision that only came with practice. The sound of the carriage returning and the bell at the end of the line were the familiar cadences of productivity and creativity. The typewriter had a certain magic, a tangible connection between our thoughts and the printed page. There was no backspace key to erase mistakes. Instead, we relied on correction tape or whiteout, turning errors into opportunities for ingenuity. And the thrill of seeing our work take shape before our eyes, letter by letter, line by line. The clatter of the keys was a symphony of concentration, each word a brushstroke on the canvas of our assignments. Those were the days, weren't they? Number three, watching TV shows without remote controls. The simple joys of television in the 70s meant more than just pushing a button when watching our favorite shows. We didn't have remote controls to flip through channels effortlessly back then. Changing the channel required getting up from the couch and manually turning the dial on the TV set. There was a certain charm to this ritual. With a bowl of popcorn, we'd settle in for the evening, ready to be transported to another world. As the show ended, there was a unanimous decision among the family members. Someone had to brave the trek across the living room to change the channel. It was a shared experience, a moment of unity as we debated which program to watch next. Sometimes there was a bit of sibling rivalry involved, each vying for control of the dial. But in the end, it was all part of the fun. In the anticipation as we turned the dial, the satisfying click as it settled in on a new channel. There was no fast forwarding or pausing, just the pure unadulterated joy of watching television in real time. Who remembers those dangerous and adventurous rides? Number four, riding in cars without seatbelts. In the groovy days of the 70s, riding in cars without seatbelts was the norm, a time when the wind in our hair and the open road stretched out before us was the ultimate feeling of freedom. Buckling up? That was a notion reserved for the overly cautious. Instead, we piled into the back seat, sometimes even standing up to get a better view out the window. There was a certain thrill in feeling the car hug the curves of the road, unrestrained by the confines of safety belts. As we cruised along to the beat of our favorite tunes on the radio, there was a sense of invincibility that only youth could bring. Sure, there were occasional bumps in the road, but we took them in stride, laughing and chatting without care. Looking back, it's a wonder how we ever survived those rides without the protection of seat belts. How do playgrounds today compare with those days? Number five, playing with metal playground equipment. The playgrounds of the 70s were a jungle gym of metal structures that sparked our imaginations and fueled our adventures. Before the era of plastic took over, we clambered over monkey bars, swung from rusty chains, and conquered towering metal slides with a sense of daring that only children possess. We reveled in the challenge of scaling metal ladders and balancing on narrow beams, our hands stained with the telltale marks of rust. Sure, there were occasional bumps and bruises, but they were badges of honor, 
proof of our bravery in the face of gravity-defying feats. And who could forget the exhilarating rush of sliding down a metal slide, the friction creating a symphony of squeaks and squeals as we hurtled toward the ground below. As the sun dipped below the horizon, signaling the end of another day of play, we reluctantly bid farewell to the metal playground equipment that had been our steadfast companions. Little did we know that safer, perhaps less thrilling, plastic alternatives would soon replace these towering structures. Now let's talk about homemade music. Number six, making mixtapes from radio recordings. The magical art of crafting mixtapes from radio recordings in the 70s, a symphony of patience, precision, and passion that defined our musical journeys. Armed with our trusty cassette recorders, we embarked on a quest to capture our favorite songs straight from the airwaves. It was a delicate dance of timing, waiting eagerly for the DJ to play that particular track, fingers poised over the record button, ready to pounce at the perfect moment. The process had a thrill, the anticipation as the song began to play, the rush to hit record before the DJ's voice intruded upon the melody. We became masters of the pause button, seamlessly blending one song into the next, creating a seamless tapestry of sound that spoke to our souls. And the dedication it took to craft the perfect mixtape, hours spent hunched over our recorders, meticulously arranging each track to create the ultimate musical experience. Whether it was for a road trip with friends or a romantic gesture for a crush, our mixtapes were a labor of love, each one a snapshot of our musical taste and personalities. But how did cameras work those days? Number seven, using film cameras and developing photos. The days of capturing memories with film cameras in the groovy 70s, when every click of the shutter promised to preserve a precious moment forever. We cherished our trusty film cameras, carefully selecting the perfect angle and composition before pressing the button. There was a sense of anticipation as we wound the film, knowing each frame was a precious commodity, not to be wasted frivolously. Once the roll was complete, we embarked on the next step of our photographic journey, developing the photos. We entrusted our precious memories to the hands of skilled technicians, eagerly awaiting the moment when we could hold the fruits of our labor in our hands. The wait was agonizing, but the joy when the photos were finally ready. We pored over each print with nostalgia and delight, reliving the moments captured on film. From family gatherings to vacations to everyday snapshots of life, each photo told a story, a snapshot of a bygone era frozen in time. Number eight, playing outside until dark without constant supervision. Remember those golden afternoons when the sun painted the sky with hues of orange and red and the air was filled with children's laughter? In those days, there was magic in the simplicity of being outdoors until the stars winked in the velvety sky. Without the tether of constant supervision, we roamed the neighborhood like adventurers, our imagination soaring as high as the kites we flew. The streets echoed with the sound of our games, hide and seek among the bushes, races down the block, and impromptu baseball games in empty lots. Each day held the promise of a new adventure, a discovery waiting to be made just around the corner. Without the distractions of screens or schedules, we lived in the moment, fully immersed in the joy of childhood. We climbed trees, scraped our knees, and made memories that would last a lifetime. As the shadows lengthened and the streetlights flickered to life, we reluctantly made our way home, our hearts full of tales to share with family over dinner. We also had some dangerous fun. Number nine, riding bikes without helmets. In the 70s, riding bikes without helmets wasn't just a thing, it was a way of life. We'd hop on our bikes, feeling the wind rush through our hair and pedal off into the sunset without a second thought. No helmets, no worries, just the open road and the thrill of adventure. It was a simpler time when scraped knees were a badge of honor. And the only rule was to have fun. Those were the days, just like the days of physical arcade games. Number 10, playing arcade games in physical arcades. The arcade, the neon lit sanctuary where tokens jingled in our pockets 
and the scent of popcorn mingled with the electric buzz of excitement. In the 70s, stepping into an arcade was like entering a realm of pure magic where the outside world faded away and we were transported into a realm of pixels and high scores. From the moment we pushed open the door, the sights and sounds enveloped us. The flashing lights, the cacophony of game noises, and the hum of anticipation that hung in the air. It was a sensory overload, a symphony of gaming bliss that beckoned us to join the fun. With quarters tightly clutched, we'd make a beeline for our favorite machines, the classics like Pac-Man, Space Invaders, and Donkey Kong. Each game was a challenge waiting to be conquered, a chance to prove our skills and earn our place among the arcade elite. We'd hunch over the controls, eyes locked on the screen, fingers flying as we battled aliens, dodged obstacles, and chased after high scores. Time seemed to stand still as we lost ourselves in the virtual worlds unfolding before us. Our every move was met with cheers and groans from fellow gamers. Remember the days of flipping through encyclopedias? Number 11, using encyclopedias for research instead of the internet. In the 70s, before the internet dominated our lives, there was a different source of knowledge, the trusty encyclopedia. These weighty tombs lined up on our bookshelves like soldiers of wisdom were our gateway to understanding the world. When school projects beckoned or curiosity struck, we didn't type a query into a search engine. Instead, we turned to these cherished volumes, flipping through their pages anxiously. Each encyclopedia was a treasure trove, filled with articles on everything from ancient history to cutting-edge science. With pencil in hand, we'd pour over the pages, immersing ourselves in the wealth of information at our fingertips. Researching with encyclopedias wasn't just about finding facts. It was a journey of discovery, a quest for knowledge that stretched our minds and fueled our curiosity. In those days, the internet may have been a distant dream, but the world of knowledge was still within our reach, waiting to be unlocked with the turn of a page. Let's relive the days of cassette tapes. Number 12, participating in cassette tape trading. In the 1970s, cassette tape trading was the heartbeat of musical discovery. It was more than just swapping songs. It was a ritual, a language spoken between friends through carefully curated collections. Each tape held a universe of sound, from rock anthems to soulful ballads, and training them was like sharing a piece of our souls. We'd gather in dimly lit bedrooms and crowded basements with our prized tapes, eagerly exchanging favorites like precious treasures. With each trade, we'd uncover new bands, genres, and sonic landscapes, expanding our musical horizons with every cassette flip. Those trading sessions weren't just about the music, but about connection, forging bonds through shared passions and playlists. And though the tapes may have worn thin and the players long since retired, the memories of those trading days remained etched in our hearts. A nostalgic reminder of a time when music was more than just a playlist, a journey shared with friends who felt like family. Hold on to your hats. We're about to go on a gripping adventure. Number 13, playing with Viewmaster Reels. In the groovy 70s, a marvel captured our imagination like no other. The Viewmaster, with its iconic red lever and binocular-like lenses, it wasn't just a toy, but a portal to adventure. We'd spend hours clicking through reels, transported to exotic locales, prehistoric worlds, and outer space adventures. Each image popped to life in glorious 3D, sparking our imaginations and igniting a sense of wonder. From the comfort of our living rooms, we'd embark on epic journeys, exploring distant lands and encountering fantastical creatures. The Viewmaster wasn't just a toy, but a magical window to the world, offering endless thrills and possibilities. In those simpler times, the Viewmaster was our ticket to adventure, a cherished companion that sparked our curiosity and fueled our dreams. And though the reels may have long since been packed away, the memories of those enchanting escapades will forever linger, a nostalgic reminder of the joy of childhood discovery. Shifting gear, let's talk about writing. Number 14, writing letters to pen pals. In the swinging 70s, before the digital age swept us away, a timeless tradition filled our hearts with joy, writing letters to pen pals. With a pen in hand and stationary at the ready, 
we embarked on journeys of friendship that spanned the globe. Each letter was a labor of love filled with tales of our adventures, dreams for the future, and secrets shared like confidants. As we sealed our letters with care and affixed a stamp, we felt a sense of anticipation, eagerly awaiting the reply that would soon travel across miles to reach us. With each exchange, bonds grew stronger and friendships deepened. Our pen pals became more than just names on a page. They were kindred spirits, companions on life's journey. Though times have changed, the connection we shared with our pen pals remains a cherished part of our past, a nostalgic reminder of the simple joys of heartfelt communication. Now, let's reminisce about the risk we enjoyed. Number 15, playing with toys made of lead. Our toys were treasures crafted from materials that sparked our imaginations back then. But looking back, we realized some were risky. Lead paint-coated soldiers and toy cars spun with metals we didn't know could harm us. Despite the dangers, we played on, unaware, lost in our adventures. Those were simpler times. When play trumps safety concerns. Though our toys may have been risky, the memories they created are timeless treasures of our youth. Now we're going to the phone booth. Number 16, using public pay phones. In the good old days, public pay phones were more than just phones. They were portals to connection. With a handful of coins, we'd step into those iconic glass booths, dialing numbers etched in memory. The clink of coins, the dial tone's melody, and the metallic click of buttons all marked the beginning of our conversations. With the receiver to our ears, we'd share secrets, make plans, and connect with loved ones, with the world outside fading away. Each call was an adventure, navigating rotary dials and area codes. Though fleeting, the memories lingered, etched in those booth's walls. And when it came to music records, the thrill was endless. Number 17, buying music on vinyl records. In those days, music wasn't just a sound, it was a feeling, a groove that moved our souls. And to experience it fully, we turned to vinyl records. Entering record stores was like stepping into a treasure trove. Rows of LPs lined the shelves, each cover a work of art, beckoning us closer. With fingers tracing over colorful sleeves, we'd hunt for the perfect addition to our collection. With a prized vinyl in hand, we'd rush home, eager to drop the needle and let the music fill the room. The crackle of the record and the sound's warmth was pure magic. Buying music on vinyl wasn't just a purchase, it was a ritual, a sacred bond between listener and music. And though the world may have moved on, the memories of those vinyl adventures remain a cherished part of our musical journey. In those days, there was a routine that was never broken. Number 18, reading newspapers delivered to the doorstep. In the groovy days of the 70s, mornings began with the comforting thud of the daily newspaper landing on the doorstep a ritual as reliable as the rising sun. With sleepy eyes, we'd eagerly snatch up the paper, eager to devour its contents. Spread out on the kitchen table or draped over our laps, the newspaper unfolded like a portal to the world beyond our doorstep. From headlines that shouted the day's news to the comics that brought smiles, each section held a treasure trove of stories waiting to be discovered. With ink-stained fingers, we'd lose ourselves in the pages, immersing ourselves in the day's events, the opinions of columnists, and the local happenings that shaped our community. Besides reading, there was another source of thrill. Number 19, recording TV shows on VHS tapes. The nostalgia of recording our favorite TV shows on VHS tapes in the groovy days of the 70s. It was a ritual filled with anticipation and excitement as we carefully set the timer on our trusty VCRs, ensuring we captured every moment of our beloved programs. You'll scare the fish. But we're missing the big football Relax. game. Relax, my VHS home video recorder is taping it right now. Before the era of streaming devices and DVRs, there was a special kind of magic in recording our favorite TV shows on VHS tapes. It was a time-consuming but rewarding endeavor filled with anticipation and a touch of uncertainty. 
we'd carefully program our VCRs, setting the timer just right to catch the beginning of our beloved programs. This is a demonstration of a home video cassette recorder. There was a sense of urgency as we rushed to switch tapes or adjust the settings, hoping to capture every moment without interruption. But it wasn't just about preserving the shows themselves. It was about creating our collections, curated with care and dedication. Each tape held a treasure trove of memories, from Saturday morning cartoons to late night movie marathons. Toys were a mix of danger and adventure in the good old days. Number 20, playing with toys without choking hazard warnings. In the 70s, playing with toys filled our days with adventure. There are no choking hazard warnings, just the thrill of building, creating, and imagining. Each tiny piece held a world of possibilities, and we embraced them all with joy and excitement. There was an unspoken understanding among us, a shared belief that with great play came great responsibility. We knew the risk, yet the sheer excitement of exploration overshadowed them. The thrill of rummaging through a box of assorted pieces, each a potential treasure waiting to be unearthed. We'd eagerly assemble intricate puzzles, gently fitting together every component until the final masterpiece emerged. Sure, there were moments of frustration when a tiny piece went missing or a delicate mechanism failed to work as intended, but those setbacks only fueled our determination, teaching us resilience and problem-solving skills that would serve us well in years to come.